and we just having some good laughs here. It is a Friday. We are Friday with the prof, and back again we have Professor Gerald Hutchinson with us, a professor in psychiatry, and, and he, he, he also works alongside the University of the West Indies, and he is the expert when it comes to mental health in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, JP, he's, welcome he's again man, on a Friday. Hi, hi, hi. Yes, nice it's a Friday. You. A Friday yeah. on a Friday. We, last week I asked some music. This week we could get drinks or we could get, <laughs> it's a Friday, you know. It's a, it's a pandemic Friday. <laughs> something wrote anything, all right? Something, 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 right? something, something <laughs> JP, to keep the mental sanity prof. Definitely, right? So definitely. last week when prof was here, we had a, a, a healthy discussion. And um, we kind of zoned in a bit on the, the, the men and the women yeah. and how they are being affected yeah, by the pandemic in terms of their mental health. And this week we want to touch on some of the other groups that are being affected in the population um, when it comes to mental health. And first sure. of all, uh, first of all, I want to touch on one of the groups that I belong to, mm -hmm. and I felt as though we've been forgotten. I find so true. Yeah, seriously. is that we were yeah. the first sector to be shut down, and we probably will be the last to reopen. And I'm talking about the entertainment industry. Right. So when it comes to mental health and some of the stresses that an artist or an entertainer goes through. I know where there's the one aspect in terms of the financial and yeah. all of that because they, they're unable to make money in this period. It's very difficult. But two is how could they deal with creativity? Because a lot of artists have complained, JP, yeah. that um, they're not feeling like if they're in that creative space to well, put out music or entertainment. Right. Mm -hmm. I find it was interesting because I have a musician friend of mine and he was saying that um, he just, he really lives on music. That's his, the feeding of his soul. And once he can't create, he just falls dead, you know. So therefore there's that aspect of I have no money. But if I can't do what I love to do, I can't grow, I can't do anything. It's so impassioned that there's nothing there. And I find that is really causing mental health with the institute, with that entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is a challenge. And, and as Rome said, the, the entertainment industry is or does tend to be forgotten, yeah. I think, and, and taken for granted. So I think the, the, the creative challenge is probably the biggest one. Of course, the, the outlets for that creativity being unavailable or for the most part um, inaccessible mean that even if there was output, there, 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 there are no or, or relatively less outlets for it. Mm -hmm. So it means that the, the, the desire to be creative would be compromised on okay. one hand. Yeah. And then on the other hand, you have the stress, like everybody else, dealing with the issues related to the pandemic, the economic issues, the home issues, the issues with relationships. And that challenge interfering with your capacity to be creative so, so I think there, 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 there are multiple challenges. I think also people, when I talk about taking the people in the entertainment industry for granted, is that when people see people performing or producing art, they kind of assume that they're in a good place. Mm -hmm. Of course, And yeah. that things are good for them. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they, they acknowledge the challenges that, that come with being an artist, um, particularly and in an environment where sometimes their art isn't as appreciated as it as it could be, so I think the the in terms of of, of generating the creativity, the ultimate um, objective would be to still and calm your mind mm -hmm. in a way that allows you to detach some space. That, that speaks to the thing that made you creative in the first place. Right. And to kind of you know, seek the source of that and to use that as your vehicle for, um, for ongoing creativity. So in other words, almost using it as therapy. Right, okay. Um, and so for yourself. Yes, yes and in so doing, um, adapt to the environment in a way that would allow the product that emerges from that to see how you can use it to feed other people. Right. Prof, let me jump in here, um, JP. <coughs> me, myself, I'm an artist, and I know what it was like. When the, the pandemic first hit, I was in this rut. I was in this creative rut. I couldn't create. They called me the Prince of Parang, and I could not write a Parang to right. save my life. I couldn't shake a shak shak because mentally I just wasn't there. And I know artists, and we being really always real here of on course, home front, yeah, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Especially in the entertainment industry, who would turn to using substances, whether it's mm -hmm. alcohol or whether it's marijuana or whether it's other drugs, to put them in a frame of mind 
where they could kind of zone out and, and get rid of the world's worries to put themselves in that creative mode. But in I wouldn't encourage artists or anyone to turn towards drugs to do that. Is there any other way that they can put themselves into this zone without having to use drugs to get creative? In the face of the pandemic. In the face yeah. of the pandemic. Well, I think mm -hmm. the, 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 the activities that certainly would help your mind would be things like meditation, meditation. things like yoga, yeah. uh, even things like getting into planting and gardening and, and, and um, exercise, you know, focusing on things that allow, like I said, for you to, to really connect with yourself and with nature mm -hmm. in, in, in a more positive and, and powerful way. And in doing that, hopefully reigniting the, 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 the source of your creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that you deal with psychiatry and um, some of the, the mental health issues we have been seeing cropping up and maybe you could give us a little more insight in this in terms of the, the frontline workers, some of the health workers are dealing with this yeah, pandemic. That's me, um, that's there, yeah, that's me. Yeah, so we have artists here and we have, right you right and have <laughs> me. Yeah, so, so Prof, talk this to group. me. Being, yeah, what, what well, again, the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the issue I think that, that most affects healthcare workers is the, the, the risk of burnout, yeah. having to push yourself harder and harder and keep responding to demands even when within yourself you feel perhaps that you don't have that much more to give. So the, the, the capacity and interestingly I think it's the same kinds of strategies, the capacity to restore yourself, to, to reset I think is, is what will best protect your mental health. One of the other things that, that I think came out of the pandemic is that because of the nature of um, the, the viral infection, mm -hmm. many healthcare workers also faced a kind of discrimination from their families and their loved ones because when, they, when, they, yeah, when they went home, you know, they won't allow to bathe in the same bathroom yeah. or change even in the they house. They to strip off from outside the house, wow. yeah. And um, some was, people yeah. had to rent separate, they did. Um, they did. separate accommodation because their yeah. family said, I don't want you coming home here. Yeah, we were isolated, you know? definitely. Mm -hmm. so, so those things mean that the, the, the capacity to appreciate the value of your work and, yeah. and, and the value of, of what you contribute to the society becomes the thing that, that allows you to compensate for that. And again, to, to nourish your, your, your sense of self and to recognize when you're getting to a point that you really can't go anymore and to take measures to deal with that, whether it's taking a break, asking for time off, going out into the country, you know, connecting with a loved one, mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. who you feel could, could um, nurture you in that Just way. Just to kind of escape from Just the escape from the challenges. But you especially know? now, Prof, I, I know that in the beginning we had that, but I know for this week so far, these few weeks, when we increase in the amount of mortality in Trinidad, um, in terms of more persons dying, I know those frontline workers are seeing more deaths. Sure. And, and when you get that, you, it's really hard to put some barrier to protect yourself to not be really sucked in. How, how do you, I mean, if you reach home and you've just had like about two persons dying and that, that mm. shift, it really hits you hard. How can we... So like um, um, sustain ourselves after that, that in, in, influx? Well, the, the, it, it is, I think, something that the, a, a human being never gets used to. Even yeah. somebody who is, is working in healthcare or any um, profession where they have to engage with death. Um, because in a way, death is the only truth. Yeah. You know, so you, you're confronted with the, the, the mortality of your own life yeah, that's, yeah, essentially, and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and that becomes a very difficult thing to kind of carry around. So I think what, what has to happen there is that you have to acknowledge the reality of that yeah. and you have to face the consequences that arise from dealing with that reality and to, to celebrate your life in a way that allows you to, to make the most, as they say, in mindfulness, to really live in the present and, and, and draw as much as you can from the present. So in fact, react to the death you see and by living more. Yes. Yeah, got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, the other group, the children? 
in terms of this pandemic, mm -hmm. I know that the children themselves would have been, a lot of them are isolated because they are accustomed to being very social, interacting with their friends, playing and snack time and lunch time and running around. And now they are confined to their rooms. They mm -hmm. have this homeschooling that they're not familiar with. They're stuck behind their desk. Uh, how are they dealing with this? Well, one of the interesting mentally? things we've been seeing with that is a rise in, 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 in children and young people who are becoming completely absorbed and consumed by video games okay. because they're spending so much time online and, and the whole kind of um, you know, social media uh, environment so that because they're, they're, their lives are so focused online that instead of getting a break from it, they, they, they've been almost uh, more consumed by it. Because it's addictive, isn't it? Once you're into it, you get all those um, enzymes, those substances being produced, which tells you, you know, I want more, I want more, right? Yeah? Sure. But, but yeah. not only that, two prophets, at, at a lot of them, when I speak to them, yeah. why you all are in this game whole day like that? Yeah. They say, well, that's where they get to meet their friends, yeah. through yes. the online yeah. that's games. Right. That's right. They play Fortnite, Fortnite. and they play Correct. these games where so, they get to interact so it's with become it's, So it's become a kind of replacement for the interpersonal interaction. Yeah. But again, the lack of physical activity, the lack of of conversation, yeah. um, um, real conversation, I think will have developmental consequences. Mm. And also will mean the people who, for whatever reason, they live in environments that are stressful, mm. they're struggling with their schoolwork, there's the uncertainty of the future, what is to come, how it's going to come, mm -hmm. what does this mean for my um, opportunities in terms of school and life and work. Sure. So it means that they, it, it, it is a lot to be coping with. And um, I think support from parents acknowledging this and working with them, engaging in more family activities, getting them out of the house, mm. even if it's to, to, to visit relatives or to you know, go driving somewhere or taking a bus somewhere, mm. but introducing that as routine and not, not you know, kind of saying, well, we'll do it when we can. When but we we'll can, but uh, put it in your schedule. Putting it, putting it in your schedule. I think that's a good schedule. idea, JP. Yeah, well where you have children at home and you yeah. make sure, okay, at this o'clock, on this day, yeah. we know we're this is this. family time or yeah. this is outdoor yeah. activity time. Yeah. We're going to the botanical schedule. gardens yeah, and we're exactly. going to have a picnic or mm. we're just going to take a walk outside because yeah. we, we, um, it, 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 it I, I am afraid of that because mm. I didn't grow up like that in yeah. terms of the whole video game thing yes, and the computer yes. era i felt yeah. as well a lot of kids miss out on good childhood days playing pitch and of skipping course. rope and of course some skipping rope, yeah. skipping <laughs> rope, yeah. <laughs> for the ladies uh, you know they like to play a little skipping rope i have a, a sister a little sister so she's a force me to do the double dutch and right, the, right, the right, hopscotch yeah, and the moral and the right, <laughs> right, okay. but i i, I yeah. think is 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 vital and i'm glad that that prof touch on yeah but I want to go further, if I may, Prof, a little bit, where um, are they being more depressed now? I mean, that's happening. But you're saying they're shifting their connection because we're social creatures. We love, especially trainees, we love to, to hang with our, you know, our colleagues and stuff. If we're not having that, do you find the children now and the adolescents are being more depressed? Well, I think they, they will become, I think, more depressed. They're certainly becoming more anxious. Right, sure. So you're mm -hmm. seeing a lot more anxiety rather than depression. But that's what... <coughs> I think that that lag in terms of as they grow older, because for some of them, they really don't know what they're missing. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, you know? exactly. Same point he's making. So, right, yeah. so it's mm. only when the pandemic is over and, they, and, and life returns to a different kind of, of normal will they realize the weight. And I think that's where they'll have trouble adjusting gotcha. because ah. they've grown so accustomed to, to that. You know, so living probably within we, we want to thank you very okay. much for joining us today once again. Because in terms of mental health, not yeah. everyone in Toronto and Tobago knows what is happening to them mentally. Yeah, sure. you think you're just under stress, but you don't know that mental health is a, a, a serious issue that works alongside Prof. this Zeman. pandemic. Prof. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much again, Prof. It's thank my you, pleasure. JP. Again, it's a Friday. We drinking juice. <laughs> 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 Thanks for joining us here on the home front. I am Rome. This is JP. This is Prof. Hutchinson. And um, we want to thank again Dwellings for, for keeping.
keeping us at home, yeah, comfortable yeah. while we're nice, inside. Nice, nice, yeah. uh, we want to thank the PD Kids Foundation and the PD department out there in Mount Hope. And JP, you are part of the, the PD Kids Foundation. I am with the team, definitely. Yes, so let's see our fancy schmanchy cup. <laughs> 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 so keep supporting them, keep donating. And it's Friday with the Prof. So we're going to see you guys next week. Same time, same place on the home front. Yeah, JP. Adios.